So suppose you score a killer deal on an infield number four because it's missing a magazine, or maybe yours got lost or damaged or something, or perhaps you just like having spares. There are cheaper aftermarket replacement options out there, but just because they're cheaper, of course, doesn't mean uh, that they're worth your money. So I guess this video is an attempt to uh, figure out whether or not uh, they are worth your money. And so we'll do a quick overview and of course we'll do some range testing as well. So the first option that we have to look at um, out there is uh, Promag. So Promag, that's this guy here, is a brand that does not have the most positive reputation, um, but we're not gonna judge it you know, solely based on that. Maybe this is a diamond in the rough or something like that. But one thing that should kind of stick out like a sore thumb for this thing, of course, is that the shape is wrong. So the original, as you can see, is curved. It's uh, The body is kind of one piece. This thing is basically uh, has sharp edges and it's a, a series of flats put together. I'm sure this was done as a cost savings measure. Uh, cheaper, easier to make it this way. So if you're a purist for that original look, which a lot of people in the, uh, the surplus uh, community are, this is just, you know, not going to do. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So that's just how it's going to be for this particular, um, this model. But uh, maybe you don't care. Maybe you just want to shoot your infield and you don't particularly uh, concern yourself with that. So it may still be a viable option in that particular case. So as far as construction quality, it's not too terrible as far as I can tell. I mean, it's not great. The follower does move freely, which is kind of nice. Um, it, it seems like it theoretically could work uh, as far as I could tell but uh, well, the range test will tell us. As far as fit goes, it's it's pretty mediocre, I guess I'd say. It's not terrible. I mean, compared to something like a Romanian AK, it's really not uh, not too bad. Don't know if it's enough to cause any sort of problems in operation, but I'll demonstrate here. Yeah, a little bit of front to back wobble of some sort and then side to side. We got a little bit going on there too. Again, not too terrible. Maybe not enough to cause any sort of function problems, but uh, we'll see. So for comparison, here's the original, as you can see here, front to back. There's there's nothing happening here. And then side to side. Pretty much nothing going on that way either. And the other option we'll look at is the Parker Hale replacement magazine. So as you can see, it definitely looks the part uh, quite a bit better. Uh, it has the, the rounded edges, um, you know, some of the differences we might be seeing are maybe more attributed to the uh, differences in condition, you know, between the original and this replacement uh, being quite a bit more pristine. It's not exact, of course, uh, especially when you look at the underside, as you can see, there's this seam right here with all these spot welds. That's not how the original one was constructed. Uh, obviously, I think this is probably also done as a cost savings measure, you know, easier and cheaper to produce it this way, but at least it looks better from the sides as opposed to the Promag, which doesn't really look right from any angle. It actually looks more like one of those Isha 4 308 versions. But anyways, the concern I have with this one is that the follower, it tilts, but as you can see, it's a lot more prone to snagging. And so, um, all the all the carriers on these things do, t or not carriers, um, followers, rather, uh, do tend to tilt, and so um, some worse than others, but the fact that this one gets uh, caught up so readily kind of makes me think that it probably isn't going to run very well. I mean, unless the geometry is such that, you know, when you load it with actual rounds, it seems to work perfectly, but I'm kind of skeptical. But uh, we'll see how that ends up going, but uh, this is actually a little worse than it. <laughs> I've had it do. Uh, it's pretty much caught right now. Um, I haven't had it lock up that badly yet, so I'll try and work it loose and then see if it works better with live ammo, but I'm a little skeptical at this point. But like I said, anything could happen. Um, it may be that it needs a little fo uh, follower, um, the follower rather needs a little bit of filing at the front or the back or something, but uh, not a good first showing. And as far as fit goes, the Parker Hale doesn't seem too bad at all. So front to back, uh, Pretty much no wobble whatsoever, just about as secure as the, the real deal. Let me see if I can get anything to happen on the side to side. Maybe just a hair, but nah, not really. I wouldn't say that there's a, a huge difference between this and the original as far as fit goes. So uh, whether or not it'll function, the uh, range test will show, but as far as fit goes, it does fit very well. As far as the range test goes, so what I intend to do is I will run five rounds through each of them, and then I'll include the original for that too, because I want to show that the rifle even works, and I'm not just uh, 
unfairly you know, testing these things. And so I figure if it can't get through five, there's no point in running 10 or any more than that. Um, and if, if it does run through through the five, then I will go ahead and, you know, reload the full 10 and go through uh, further testing. I know this isn't going to be the most thorough torture test. Uh, part of that, of course, is the ammo situation as it, is, as it uh, exists right now. So uh, 303 British is not the easiest to find. To find enough ammo to do a torture test um, is a difficult task in and of itself. And if I could, I'd pay through the nose, and I just don't want to indulge the, the gougers in that stuff. I mean, it's 303 British. I, I'm not using it for self-defense. I'm not, uh, not carrying this concealed. So um, I could just just as soon not buy the ammo um, instead of indulging uh, all the people that would overcharge you by a, you know, a factor of two or three or something like that. So not the strongest test, but uh, you know, between ProMag and the fact that this one gets hung up, I think that odds are pretty good that uh, I'm guessing that I'm not gonna come out recommending either one of these, but we'll see. Uh, that, that having been said, I guess uh, let's uh, hit, hit the, uh, the range. So we're back at the coffee table. What uh, conclusion can we uh, draw from this experience? Well, basically aftermarket stuff is trash. Don't bother with it. If you really need a magazine, just go for the real deal. Uh, that's, that's kind of about all. Thank you for watching.